So what is the zero knowledge part of a zero knowledge proof? I've taken this from the Wikipedia article, but I will walk through it with you. Uh, there's a link there for the Wikipedia article on zero knowledge proofs. The classic example is this Alibaba's cave. Okay. Peggy, the prover, has found this magic cave. That's the little girl in the the purple shirt there, where you can walk around either side A or side B, and at the back of the cave there is a magic door that is locked with a password. If she knows the password, she can go from around A to B and come back out. And she can't go through the middle in the section because there's a big rock in there that you can't, can't get over. So, if you want to go around, you've got to be able to open the door. Now, there is the prover, Victor, who's standing outside watching. And he can see her go into the cave, and if she chooses to go via Route A, she can unlock the door with her magic password and come back out Route B. And by doing this, he's observed that she has done this. But he doesn't know whether she's going to go A or B. So some of the time she goes via A, and some of the time she goes via B. So he watches her, and he goes into the door of the cave, and he's going to tell her something after she's already gone into the cave. He's going to scream, come out A. And if she's gone in A, she doesn't have to unlock the door. But if she's gone in B, she has to use her password to unlock the door. So... Half the time, she doesn't have to unlock the door, and the other half, she does. So, every time she goes through the door, it relocks behind her, and she has to use her password again. But if he sees her come out A, he's got a 50-50 chance that she knew the password, because that meant she went in B. So, he does this a bunch of times. And each time, he increases the likelihood of... Seeing her go in, she randomly picks A or B, he randomly says A or B, and she comes out that side. And each time he gets greater and greater confidence that she has actually the password and she can go through the hidden door at the back. This is the iterative part of a zero-knowledge proof, as in, I prove something, but it's not an absolute proof. It's a proof that has a certain probability of demonstrating that I know the solution. And that probability of demonstration means that if we're going to do this in the snark fashion, where it's a, a one-time thing, we have to have a very high probability that you actually know whatever the secret is. So, provided she can open the door, she can go through, she can come around, she can open the door, he can see that she's opened the door. And there are a bunch of criteria that we might might have on this zero-knowledge proof. For instance, could he record it? Yeah, would he be given any information? Well, no, because he waits outside and he sees her go into the cave. He doesn't know at that point whether she's taken path A or path B until he steps in and tells her, come out path A. So, by doing that, he has no clue whether or not she has it or she doesn't, other than the fact that she comes out of the other path. And that's the zero-knowledge part of this, is that once she's done this, okay, he can have no knowledge of what choices she's made. All that she, he knows at the end is this fact. Did she come out? Okay? And the mere fact that she did come out of one of these paths that he asked for indicates that she knows it. Now, if she didn't know it and she went in and he said A and she came out B, he'd immediately know that she didn't use her password or she doesn't know it or she isn't capable of going through. So the flip side of this is that if she fails to come out the right path, then she obviously doesn't know this. In the zero-knowledge nomenclature, this is often referred to as a gate. That if you manage to go through this particular gate in the computation, this particular event, and you produce the right result, 
that you've partially proven that you had the knowledge to open that particular gate or to solve that particular gate. So that's how kind of the zero knowledge part works. Now remember I said when each time she does this she only has a 50% probability of having to have her password. That's because she could go in, he could say A, back up here, he could say A, but she could be sitting over here already and just come back around this side. It's only a 50% probability on that gate. Now, with lots of stuff in zero knowledge proofs in cryptography, what we do is we just make that probability infinitesimally small that there is any chance that they don't possess the correct password. In elliptic curve, cryptography, it's basically 1 over 2 to the 256. The probability is less likely than the chance of, you know, walking through a wall and having quantum uncertainty allow you to pass through the wall without having to open a door. And consequently, that probability being so low guarantees that in a single pass, you have guaranteed this result and that's the snark part of zk snarks is being able to do this in a fashion where a single solution that is pre-computed proves that you have the result but that single solution also doesn't give away anything about what the process was or other information about you it just demonstrates that you have the particular password that you have the particular key now, lots of these things that involve really high levels of probability, okay, are problems that are tough to solve. And we have some interesting knowledge about tough to solve problems. Some of them we can explain quite easily, but in a mathematical sense, there's these class of tough to solve problems that quite often even though it is difficult to solve, we may be able to brute force solve it, given enough time, but solutions are not easy, and quite often they're equivalent to each other. And that class is known as the NP complete problems. And the particular one we're going to take a look at is Sudoku puzzles. We know things about a 2x2 two two Sudoku puzzle that it isn't that hard to solve, which is why we're going to do it in class, because in this example in class, because, you know, a 2x2 two two I can demonstrate and we can derive all the information and understand it in fairly easily in finite time. If we did a 3x3, three three, it would be much harder and require lots of explanation and lots of calculations. And if you did a 9x9, nine nine, you've reached the point where it's sufficiently difficult that, generally speaking, human beings can't solve it and computers take a lot of time to solve it, but that's because this is in a class of graph coloring problems that are NP-complete, and it's been mathematically proven to be NP-complete. -complete. So, I don't know if you know much about Sudoku problems. This is not something that I really knew much about before, it came to my attention in relationship to demonstrating zero knowledge proofs. But we start out with this little matrix of values. And you'll notice my initial set has one number in each little corner. So over here in this corner, I've got a 1. In this one, I've got a 2. In this one, I've got a 4. And in this one, I've got a 3. Now, a solution to the problem is when you can go across any one of these, like across that first row. And every number is used, as in 1, 2, 3, 4 in that row. And consequently, it'll have the same summation as every column. If you do a column, every number is used, 1, 2, 3, 4. If you look at any block, there's one of the little four blocks. Then every number is used in that, 1, 2, 3, 4, which means these all add up to the same values. And the challenge is to arrange the numbers in a fashion for the entire puzzle so that you get that result. Now, there turns out to be a unique solution to these puzzles. As in, given an initial state, there's always one unique solution. 
and only one. So if you happen to know the puzzle, this is the solution, then you have solved this hard problem, that's your setup problem, and at that point you can do things with that solution to prove that you have a solution.